When I went through the surgery for Moya Moya, I didn't tell anyone. It was a very difficult time for me. I had to write down what would happen to all my things if I were to die. I think when you're faced with your own mortality, you want to make sure that you lived your life how you wanted to live it. I just want to keep making the most amazing music and showing people that, you know, if I can do it, anyone can do it. My name is Jennifer Lee, but I'm better known as Toki Monster. I am a music producer and live performer DJ, and all the songs are composed by me. Electronic music is the music producer's world. It is what you can do to push the envelope. My music is electronic but it has many organic sounds, like a piano or a violin. Going a step further beyond that is creating instruments out of non-instruments. So something that I like to do is use field recordings. I take a little recorder around with me and record different kinds of sounds that I like. I can use little bits of that to create new sounds. They do have a really interesting tonality that is not common in music. This is my song, Rose's Thorn. It is a track off my most recent album, Loon Rouge. With this track, I did use a lot of field recordings. For the drum sounds, I decided to use a truck door. Rocks hitting each other and a regular snare drum. I layered them all on top of each other. Together, we have... And the great thing is when you do stuff like that, no one else will have that sound. No one else will have a snare truck door rock sound in their song. There are unusual sounds, things that are not considered music. I recorded this wonderful beach sound. That like weird bird chirping. There is something to me about creating an environment in a song. It takes you somewhere else. Beyond just the song and the melodies, you're actually removing someone from their environment and putting them by the sea, putting them in nature. I was raised in Torrance, California. I was born to an immigrant mother. My father passed away when I was very young, so for the most part I was raised by a single mother who worked very hard to kind of provide for me. So I took piano for about 10 years. My upbringing introduced me to music, though I don't think my mom intended for me to become a musician. I remember discovering West Coast hip hop. Everything about it was something that appealed to me a lot, and I flourished in that. I would start producing once I entered college. Even though I loved hip hop, I had no access to rappers when I was starting out. So the music started to become hip hop beats, but with electronic sounds in it. No one had heard this style of music that was so much hip hop, was so forward thinking and electronic. I started participating in other events with other producers and I became a part of a scene. That itself could almost just be like a rap beat. The drums themselves are just so simple without anything else. That's why I find it. Percussion is very important. I think it creates movement. 
Even the pianos, the main thing is that there's movement. That bass sound is very simple. All it is is one note. Rhythm guitar. The guitar lead. They're not coming from a real guitar. I was going for a non-realistic guitar sound. I made this song like right after my surgery. It was one of the first songs that I worked on. Around 10 years ago, I started getting migraines. One doctor suggested that I potentially could have a disease called moya moya. The arteries on the left and right side that supply blood to your brain start to shrink. And so what ends up happening is stroke, aneurysm, you, you will die. Fast forward about 10 years later, I had a strange incident where I couldn't feel my left foot. In the back of my head, I've always had that moya moya thing there. By January of 2015, I had two brain surgeries a week apart from each other. Right after the surgery, I was tired and in pain, but I was okay. It was the recovery process that was difficult. I would get stroke symptoms, but I couldn't feel the entire left side of my body. And just out of nowhere, I completely lost my ability to talk and to understand speech, and I could no longer communicate with anyone. And one thing that I noticed throughout this entire process was I couldn't understand music anymore. It's nothing but noise. Like an airplane flying in the sky. I couldn't understand music, so there was no music anymore. That was very difficult for me. Eventually, I noticed that the language was getting a little better day by day. The soundtrack is coming back. All the music that you hear in the elevator, out of people's cars, on TV, all these things were slowly creeping back into my life. And I was elated. Hi. Hey. Okay. How's it going? Good. Good. So this is what I have up right now. These are all from the same take, but I had to mix them all differently because depending on what note you sing, those frequencies would jump out more. When I went to open my computer, it's to be like, okay, this is the time. It's my time to shine. I'm going to try making a new song. It was awful. It was garbage. It didn't sound good at all. I didn't know how to make music anymore. I figured if everything else came back, this would come back. Let's try re-recording one of your leads for our song. Cool. And See if we can like breathe in some new life. Sounds good. I'm gonna start from the... People think that I had to relearn how to make music. I didn't have to relearn it. I just had to wait for it to come back. But I'll play like a couple bars before it goes in. Fast forward just like a week or two weeks, I was able to make the very first song that ended up on my most recent album. Cool. That was great. Cool. What a great recording. Another element of the song are these little vocal samples. They are not words. They don't mean anything. It's just effects. It is having the beauty of a person's voice without them distracting you with words. And these songs essentially make themselves. And even I'm surprised at the end, you know, how they come to be. I was like, I had no idea I'd end up making a song like this. For me, as a musician, I always want to innovate. I don't want to be making the same type of music as everyone else. Because then why wouldn't people need to listen to my music? After the brain surgery, the one thing that changed was my philosophical approach. Once you're faced with the fact that you might die, you realize, I don't want to live my life for anyone else but myself. I want to be the kind of artist that creates her own vision for herself, no matter what it is that I do. And I want to know that each day I live, I feel fulfilled.